Well, who'd have thought? Windy Point is windy. Certainly not recommended to rappel in Crocs, but if you're going to, you might as well put them in sport mode first. Today I'll be talking about a lightweight ski mountaineering harness from Blue Ice, the Shukas Light, which while it might not look like it, this actually is the harness here. There's this tiny little bag. And pulling it out, you see it's got kind of a regular waist belt. It has two gear loops on the side, albeit quite small gear loops. Then small clip which is not load bearing just kind of helps it stay together these two central points which serve both to join the harness as well as uh, serve as a belay loop then our leg loops you take a look too the leg loops down here can be removed taking these tabs around so you can get in and out of this harness if you're in ski boots or mountaineering boots, wearing crampons, something like that. Long story short, you don't have to take your shoes off, so that saves some time. And yeah, there's, it's even pretty much transparent looking through it. Quite light indeed. This harness retails for about 105 Canadian dollars. Kind of the usual disclosure at this point, I pay for this harness with my own money, and I am not affiliated with Blue Ice. While this harness might look quite flimsy, it is UIAA certified, so it's a legitimate climbing harness, and can be used for rappels, ski touring, those sort of applications. Probably the main thing going for a harness like this is its weight. I'm not even sure if my scale will pick it up. It's so light. Nope. Okay, back at it with a much more uh, precise measuring tool. In this case, I use this paired with a density kit for snow science measurements, usually. But it'll work for this as well. So this puts this harness at just around 80 grams. Note, that is a eight zero grams, so less than 100. If you want to compare that weight to some similar harnesses, an example here, a Black Diamond Coolwar, kind of a more conventional ski mountaineering type harness. This one, about 210 grams. And lastly, a more conventional climbing harness, this one from Black Diamond, which weighs a much more hefty 390 grams. Getting back to the Blue Ice Shoecast light here, given the material involved and how it kind of concentrates stress on relatively small bands, particularly legs and the waist, it's not something you're going to be wanting to hang around in for long periods of time. But if you're using it, say, on something like a ski traverse where you need a harness for glacier travel, but the chances of actually weighting the harness are quite low. This could actually be a really good choice. Uh, additionally, say if you're doing a, an alpine route where you know you're going to have to do a rappel, but it's only one rappel or even a short distance, you don't really want to bring a big bulky climbing harness. This gives you flexibility to still be safe, but won't take up a lot of room in your pack. As you might imagine, just given the size and weight of the material involved in this harness, long-term durability might be an issue. Uh, as of this point, I have not spent enough days using it to make an assessment of that, but we'll take it out into the field and see how it does. Like any small harness, it can be a bit tangled when you take it out of its stuff sack, and spreading it out to avoid twists can take a bit of practice. I usually fit a small harness size and found that the small shoe cast light fit very snug as soon as you have more than one layer on.
After a bit of practice putting the harness on, the whole transition process is actually quite smooth and is no slower than a conventional medium weight ski mountaineering harness. Switching gears to another important part of any harness, how comfortable is it when you are free hanging? Here I compared the shoe cast lights to the two other harnesses from the studio, as well as a very uncomfortable improvised harness tied from a triple length sling. It took similar amounts of time to get into all four setups. And once putting all my weight on the harnesses, it worked out kind of as expected. With the improvised triple length sling being very uncomfortable, the shoe cast light being similar to the black diamond couloir, both reasonably comfortable, and the conventional climbing harness actually being quite pleasant. Taking the three harnesses from the studio out to a nearby crag, all the harnesses functioned quite well for repelling. Though kind of similar as the previous test, the sport climbing harness was comfy enough to stop and smell the roses, while the shoe cast light and the couloir were both manageable, with the shoe cast being slightly less comfy. I've been using this harness, the Blue Ice Shoe Cast Light, for about six months now on a variety of trips. Uh, some day touring on glaciers, some longer ski traverses, a little bit of just kind of recreational rappelling down some canyons, and overall found it to be a pretty good harness. Uh, it is definitely light as the name implies. Some good things, some bad things, we'll get into that in a sec. The, uh, the lack of a conventional belay point, kind of here, takes a bit of getting used to, but whatever you're doing, you're probably going to be bringing a large triple action carabiner anyways, so it's not that big of a hassle to uh, tie the harness together using this and then use that as a master point or just depending on what your applications are doing, go from there. Uh, the gear loops on this harness I found, just given how tiny they are, they're uh, a little hard to rack many things on them. I've found myself generally bringing a couple extra large carabiners and using these as kind of like clip-in points and clipping things on them. So that adds a little bit of mass. I would have kind of liked if these were a bit larger and then I didn't have to do that. But that being said, quite a small problem. The leg loops here are actually pretty easy to, uh, to manage once you get the hang of them. The safety strap, Nice elastic, keeps those from uh, coming undone accidentally. So yeah, uh, I was initially kind of dubious about just how there's not that much material involved on the leg loop attachment points, but they actually work pretty well. So yeah, there's quite a few positives about this harness, uh, most notably how light it is, how packable it is. If you're doing some sort of trip where you might only have one rappel or you just need a harness just for glacier travel, this is actually a really good option. The one concern I have with this, which was shown in the previous test, you don't want to be hanging out in this for a long time. It's uh, definitely not a regular usage climbing harness. Uh, in terms of long-term durability, I haven't noticed any problems with it yet. I'd imagine that just given the material involved, it might not last as long as some more burly harnesses, but so far it's worked quite well for me. In terms of who this harness is best for, I'd say people trying to do fast and light missions, uh, going on longer ski traverses, places where you're probably not going to spend a lot of time waiting the harness and you need one just for kind of safety, then it's a really good choice. Yeah, this combined with something like the Petzl Radline makes a uh, very light, packable, safe system. So I definitely recommend putting those together. Uh, who's this harness not good for? Kind of as I had alluded to already, Anyone trying to use this on a regular basis, say like an everyday sort of application if you're working in it. Generally, if you're going to be spending a lot of time in it, waiting it, you probably want to get something bigger. Yeah, in any case, that's it for now. Happy trails. Mm -hmm.